I'm TLA, um, I created TLA Black Women in Tech, but you have loads of initiative verticals and industry focus. So TLA Blockchain, so depending on where you work, you might want to check out the other network. And I always recommend that. Obviously, TLA Black Women in Tech is probably one of the best. I should just add this. Uh, but yeah, so, and uh, I went to one of the events and said to you like, I am still the only black woman in the room here. Yep. And you were like, I know. And it was kind of like, in your eyes, I saw a bit of, I know, but I actually don't know how to, to fix this. <laughs> and But I remember how angry you were. Yeah. Because there were 75 people in the room, yeah. mainly white men. Yeah. And you said to me, I'm the only black woman here. Yeah. I'm really angry about this. I want to do something about it. And yeah. I said, let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. And we sat down, I think it was somewhere again around London, and we have a conversation. You say, okay, I'm going to give you the branding of Tilly Black Women Tech, and then you do your thing. And then I, pop, 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 I think it was about in a week. Obviously, I have a great team, so we put things together. It's like, wow. And then you said to me, like, okay, when you do your launch event, which is in, was in September 2019, yep. I said, if you have 40 people, that'd be great. I said, what are you talking about, 40 people? I want to have more than that. And obviously, I'm, I'm a hunter. We had well over 100. <laughs> we had 250 people. Yep at the launch event, and that was just the beginning of the story. Um, but I, I, the reason why I wanted to sit down with you, obviously most of, I'm gonna be talking, I've been talking to a lot of black women, but I wanted to sit down with you because there's also power in allyship. Yeah. And uh, Amnesty TLA has been my, my fast track pass in terms of you know, meeting some great people, but also in terms of the support that obviously the network has given me and they are, Amazing companies, there's, there's a company who's also supporting, such as Thrive Consulting, a part of TLA, Louisa, who is great. Yes. And we want to talk, I want to talk about allyship. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can tell us a bit more about who you are first, and then we can sure. talk about that. Sure. So, so my name is Russ, and I've set up Tech London Advocates and Global Tech Advocates. And this is a, a, basically a network of communities of tech leaders, founders and entrepreneurs and corporates and universities all coming together to do two things. One, to really get behind the startups, the scale-ups that are really driving our tech sector. And two, to put the spotlight on the issues and challenges that we face as a, as a tech community. And the, the number one issue that I think is a hindrance to our growth and success is the lack of diversity and inclusivity in the tech sector. It's an eight, a sector that's 80% white men. Mm -hmm. and I think that is a huge barrier to our future success, not just here in London, but across the UK. Yeah. And it's a common theme in many, many tech hubs around the world. So when we met, um, you had a lot of passion looking at me saying, I want to change this. And for me, this community is, is, is built on change agents, people who want to make a difference. And you have built an amazing black women in tech community. It's, I think, our second largest after our women in tech group. But there's a message in both of these communities about how we need to bring women and black women into the tech sector and really help break those barriers down because they are there. Um, some are intentional, some are not intentional, but we need to fix this. And what you're doing through the work that you have with TLA Black Women in Tech, and if you haven't attended Flavila's monthly sessions and meetups. I highly recommend them. They are absolutely brilliant hearing the stories, hearing the challenges, hearing the, the great successes that are happening with black women in the tech sector. And for me, I think when you came to me and said, I want to publish a book called The Voices in the Shadow. Um, and I said, look, what can I do? What can we do as a community to help you? We've got over 12,000 yeah. Tech London advocates. We've got probably we've gone over 25,000 global tech advocates in 22 hubs around the world. So your journey is our journey and our journey is your journey and keep doing what you're doing. And I loved what Deborah said in the last session about a bit of crazy. I think we bonded because we're both a bit of crazy. <laughs> and, and you do these things because there is a little bit of craziness inside us, but I think there's a passion to make a difference and change the world and you symbolize that incredibly well. Thank you so much. I want to talk about, you, you know, you said so many good things and I feel very flattered. And, uh, but what I want to talk about is um, your perception, maybe looking at black people in the technology space. Is there anything that changed your perspective? Uh, did you have a different vision when it comes to black people? Or, or maybe something that you want to share around what also makes a great ally? Yeah, I think, I, I think there's been a huge frustration in me personally that 
that the black community is just so, has been so underrepresented in the tech sector. Yeah. And I think that is to the detriment of the tech sector. You know, I've always believed whether it's, it's black people, whether it, it's women, whether it's people with disabilities, we've got a great tech for disability working group. We have got to bring greater diversity into these businesses. I speak to a lot of entrepreneurs and founders setting up these businesses and I always say, look, you know, your employee number one or your co-founders number two, build a diverse organization now. Don't wait till you're number, you've got 20 or 50 or 100 and please go into areas where you can recruit diverse talent. I get very frustrated with many of the investors backing these businesses because they'll raise a lot of money, they'll do a series A round or a series B round, and then they'll say, oh, here, talk to my recruitment firm. And that recruitment firm just goes into the same community time and time again. And this is something that I think we desperately need to change for tech. So what you do and bringing more people into this community, into the tech sector, leaders like Mark Martin, who runs UK Black Tech, who's on our advisory board as well. This is part of the message. So being here today, I want to really amplify this and say, look at the amazing talent that's here, and not just who's in the room, but how do we attract so many more people and young black people into the tech sector? It is vital for our future success. Absolutely, and I couldn't say anything more to what you, what you already say perfectly well. But I wanted to ask you a question, and I think you made so many valid points. When, you know, people say, I want to be a great ally, mm. how can they start? And one, before I ask you this question, but I want to say that this structure in terms of how do we make sure that we have diversity and inclusion. Yes. And some of the previous people as we heard speak talk about important having a structure, having intention and having an action plan and deciding, having a yes. strategy about diversity and inclusion. Not just saying it, but putting it in place and having, you know, some form of um, you know, uh, accountability, yes. especially if you are a big organization, if you think Toyota, yeah. Accenture, Google, whatever they say has an influence, <laughs> especially in the yes. stock market. So you want to make sure that you say the right thing, but also your actions, your words max, match your action. Exactly. And I think, I, I think there's two things that, that, that kind of get me focused on allyship. And one is I, I speak to not just black women. My primary focal point is white men because I have a lot of white men who are founders and entrepreneurs and CEOs in, in our community saying, what can I do to, to help? Mm -hmm. And I always say to them, look, find somebody in your organization and say to them, I wanna mentor you, I wanna talk to you, I wanna be an ally for what you're trying to do. And it doesn't take a lot to do that. I think for me, there's that grassroots, how can we get individuals to really step up and say, I want to help and be an ally. And, it's people like me who have to call out others to say, you need to do that. You need to do that, yeah. but I need to do that too. The other thing that really uh, aggravates me is um, being very honest here is, you know, I've worked for large corporates, I've worked in startups. I get very angry with CEOs and boards who just talk the talk and don't walk the talk. And folks, it's out there. You know, there are some companies that are trying to make a difference. There are CEOs, there are management boards that are trying to do this differently. But there are a lot of other organizations and leaders that just give this lip service. Mm -hmm. And I feel part of my role is to call those people out and say, what are you doing? What are you practically doing to move the needle? And I think we have to collectively do that, but I have to bring others, mainly white men, into this discussion to say, you need to call out others because we're not going to move the needle. We've been talking about this for a long time yes. and the numbers are not moving as quickly as we want them to. And it's those people in those positions of authority, you know, the CEO who says, I'm embracing this and is walking the talk throughout the organization will move the needle. Mm. Not a lot of them are doing it. So we need more of them to be driving it. That to me mm -hmm. yeah. is where allyship starts at the top, at the top, and we need to fundamentally drive that change. Yeah, and, and I, I completely agree. And that's also the reason why I wanted TLA Black Community to not be exclusive. You have to be a black woman to join a network. I wanted when a white men come to our event, thing, that's how it looks to be outnumbered. Absolutely, so you can understand why it's important to do something about it. And your events, you know, when I'm looking on screen and scrolling through who's on Zoom, you know, it is mainly black women, yeah. but there are white men yeah. there yeah. and I think we have to embrace them and say take this away bring other white men into the conversations who have indicated a desire 
to help th this change mm. to happen. We will all benefit if we make this happen. So. Absolutely. How do you want to be remembered, Mr. Shaw? <laughs> I, well, I, I still have many years ahead of me, so I want to keep <laughs> building this community. I'm not dead. Yeah, I'm not dead. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but I want to see if we can make a difference for many more people. Um, I, one of the things that I just get a buzz about every day is I get emails from people in the community who've connected with each other, whether they met an investor or they recruited somebody to fill a position or we opened a door for somebody through a connection. To me, that is how a grassroots organization works. And if we can make a difference at that level, but also amplify the message that says, these are the key things that we need to change in tech. This is probably the most critical. Um, we're never done with this job, as you yeah. know, but if we move the needle in the coming years, that I would love that to be a, a legacy. Amazing, thank you so much. Thank you, and congratulations on a fabulous book. And let's keep going on our journey together. Yay! Yay. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. Well done.